This Liege, Baston Liege, is a, a Belgian race, aka the old lady. La Bouillenne is his nickname. And here we have the front runner. We've got the Mape C40 here. This is looks like Bettini. He's sort of grinding out there. He's in his 39, the Dura Aces, the 7700 group set. Nine speed. This is back in the day with the, where carbon was sort of on the edge here. And this is Bogard. Look at that coming right around there. Still in the 39 on his Colnago C40. It's essentially the same bike. It's very interesting having Rabobank and Mape essentially on the exact same bikes, just different paint jobs. It was sort of, uh, you know, interesting. There we have here, Frankie Vanderbooker. Where, where did he even come from then? Where did he even come from then? This is back in the days with the helmets with the Giro Boreas, and uh, they were about 220 bucks. I used to have a white one. Got it back in 1998. And uh, yeah, so this is this is classic stuff. We've got Frankie Vanderbooker just shadowing Michael Bogard, who was the Danish champion at the time. So this is Dane versus uh, so D Dutch rather Dutch versus Belgium. All right, so this is big. If I've, I raced in Belgium a season back in 2003, and, and it's strong rivalry between the Dutch and the Belgians. So this was full on. This is electric uh, commentating here when it was on. So Vanderbroeke. Going for the attack. Still in the big ring. And uh, just going for it. So the cadence there is probably about 80. So he could, have, he could have gone a little bit quicker. Had he had he known, you know, that back in the day, they didn't really have SRMs and power meters as such. So it was just more about, you know, just going as fast as you could. They didn't really understand the cadence as well as they do today. Lance Armstrong changed all that, though. Lance Armstrong would change that. Tyler Hamilton would change that. When Tyler Hamilton won, won with a compact crank, I think that was in 2003. So yeah, and, and Vinokurov, of all those guys were coming out with the high cadence, compact cranks, etc. So this is the Giro Boreas, Cofidis team also that year, the year before '98 with Bobby Julek in the third in the Tour de France, and they're riding an MBK frame which was made uh, in France apparently out of Columbus Outtech two tubing, and it had a time one inch fork, a super flexi fork, time fork made in France. Eh? And it had a Colt uh, Campagnolo nine-speed group set, which they, they had for about a year. And then in 2000, they went to 10-speed. So for about a year there, you could get a nine-speed uh, Campag record titanium carbon levered group set. And then it went to, it's only for years. So like when SRAM in 2012 did their 10-speed Gen 2 shifters for just a year, and they went over to 11-speed SRAM 22. Okay, so this is the chase group behind, and they're going for it. It looks like a beautiful day. Temperature estimates based on what people are wearing around there. It looks like it's probably about 15 degrees. So perfect weather for going really hard. Dehydration is a little bit harder to get that low blood plasma. And so it's going to be a great day. It's going to be a great day. And we have Bugard and Vanderbilt. Look at the old font. This is only not, this is 1999. I remember watching this on SBS. Like, you know, it's uh, hilarious on a, on a rerun. So look at his setup here. Thank you, Vandy Booker in the drops. Old school style. He's got his seat. Sort of reasonably forward for back in that generation. But look how skinny that fork is. You can just feel it flexing through the camera. The wheels he's using that day are tubulars, a uh, wheel called Arda, which is made by a guy called Cess Beer, a Dutch guy. And uh, he used to have like a wheel workshop. And he, he basically made some competition for lightweight. They, they were cheapier and they were flexier. And they were called Arda, A-D-A. Arda wheels. I'm not sure where that name Arda came from. But that was Cess Beer's. A Dutch wheel builder, so they were handmade by him, and they were tubulars. They were about 1,200 grams the pair, so very light for back then. But these days, 1,200 grams is uh, you know not not to, for rim clincher for tubulars. It's not that light. It's pretty standard. So look at that. He's attacked over the climb, put it in the big ring. This is where he needed 53. You know, look at the cadence now. See, that's his ideal cadence. See that? So he did understand cadence. I'll have to take that back. He did understand cadence, but he was a bit limited. With on the climb, and on the back here's '98 world champ Oscar Kamenzen, who's also on a Lamprey Colnago C40. Another C40 here with a Dura 77 group set, 7700 nine speed. Look at that; he's really in that 53 with the 12 on the back, really just spinning it out on the downhills. So these guys are motoring. Look like they're doing it probably about 55, 60k an hour. Probably, well, actually, probably about 50 right now. But just yeah, motoring along there. Just motoring along. Big blood volumes, beautiful weather for it. Just the perfect conditions. The crowd, perfect conditions for it. It doesn't, it doesn't really get better than this. 
for a bike race. Nice and cool, 15 degrees Celsius. Everyone's wearing jeans and jacket, which means it's still a bit chippy, chilly for the Belgians. And so there you go, the cadence there, dropping a little bit. Probably not using the gears as good as he could. But again, he had such a big gap, he probably didn't care too much. Bogard's still trying to catch back on. And this was, again, this was the era where the power meters weren't really there. So the psychology of grinding a little bit was very strong. They didn't fully understand the cadence just yet. You know, it was, you know, it was sort of a bit of a mix. Now, you, you don't see riders grinding at all. Well, we saw Quintana the other day just spinning. You don't see riders grinding in 2020. Everyone's spinning because everyone understands power. Like deep, Chris Froome has done that. Dr. Ferrari's done that. Lance Armstrong's done that. Just that cadence. Rowan Dennis in the hour record. Wiggins in the hour record. That cadence is just really drummed into riders now. So on the flat, they spin. On the climb, they spin. In the attack, they spin. We saw Nairo Man Quintana, aka the vegan, with his low inflammation face. That vegan diet gives that low inflammation. Um, and that's what you get. You know, being vegan, you'd see my face very sunken in, very lean. It's an emaciation nation. And you see that. And Natasha as well, like it's just it creates a low inflammation effect. So often, yeah, some people use corticosteroids to get effect, but you just use vegan, just cut out the meat and dairy, and your face will, will suck right in, relative to otherwise. All right, so let's have a look at Bogard's bike here again. Mape, sorry, not a Mape, Colnago C40 carbon tubing. Looks like I had a roll saddle on there, maybe a Concours, and uh, he's running alloy wheels, alloy wheels with tubulars. He's got that big bright ITM stem. And it looks like he's running ITM bars as well. Big, he's got riding wide bars, isn't he? Sort of a bit of a bus, a bit of a Chris Horner effect, very similar to Chris Horner on the bike. And he's got his booties on, so another indication that was quite cool morning. Frank Vanderbooker with his trademark signature red booties on that MBK. Look at that aero down tube. Aero down tube. Full alloy with a full carbon time one inch steerer fork. If you, have you ever ridden a one inch steerer carbon fork? You know about it. It's Flex, it's Flex City. Flex City. He's got the... Uh, it's not a... Um, it looks like a flight saddle. That, that's a Concours, Concours saddle on there. Uh, similar to what Lance would like to use. ITM stem. A-head. This is when the A-head came out. A-head came out with 1999, basically. And then Trek followed over for 2000 uh, with their US Postal bikes. They put A-head on the 2000. But in 99, the entire US Postal squad ran a uh, non a head they've been a quilt stem for the tour de france bikes Look at that grinding a bit here so he's you know he's just riding with emotion here versus technique this is where he could have got free time by just putting in a easier gear just to spin but again he's got such a big gap he's probably not really caring too much so that's the problem with a lot of, when you take a lot of painkillers that can block your logic of spinning to win because you don't feel you don't feel the pedals basically you, know, you take painkillers you don't feel your legs your legs just go numb all right, so that can be bad because then you're pushing a big gear, but then you're losing power. All right, so if you're going to take any painkillers, whatever, make sure that you're still spinning. Yeah, and so the gap, the gap's there, but it's closing, isn't it? There's riders coming up behind him. So that's an example there where he was a lot stronger, and if he just used, used easier gears, the gap would have been bigger. So he performed in spite of you know 50-50 gear choices. Sometimes it was good, sometimes it was not so good. So that's what that's the mistake people make. People just go, oh, he won. That must means this works. Disc brakes work or this thing works. It's like, well, yes and no. Let's look at where we can get some free time there. All right. So I always like to analyze things forensically. Look, he's grinding now. You know, this is grinding. So this is, he's losing time now. He's losing time now. He's still probably in the big ring. He probably made a promise to himself, I'm going to keep him in the big ring the whole way, which is sort of cool back in 99. But in 2000, you know, riders are going to beat you if, if they're going to spin. So he's still in the 53. Assuming he's got a 53, he might, not, he might have pulled a Biana Reese and run like a 49, a 49 uh, Campag chain ring. So he's, the gap's closing down. The gap is closing down. He's looking over his shoulder. He's making sure he's got that thing. So he's slowed up. He's slowed up. He's celebrating the victory. And uh, wow, what a day for Belgium, hey? This was the race that really put uh, Frankie boy on the map. And... Uh, Earned him a lot of accolades. Six hours, 25. Bam, across the line. And beating Michael Bogard, whew, that's, uh, that was a big deal back in 99 because Bogard, the bogeyman, was the, the dream boat Dutch boy. So beating someone with status like that instantly put Vanderbilker on the, on the map 
big time, especially in the hearts of the Belgians who have a little unwritten rivalry with uh, Holland in the north there. So beating the Dutch champion was a big deal back in 99. And he's got the same helmet as well, the Giro Boreas, Boreas in the Dutch national colours. They never made one of those, did they? They never made one. These were like custom helmets. You could buy the Kofidis one in America, but you couldn't get the uh, Dutch national champion. Unlike now, they'd do a little slip, slip release here and there. But uh, that was that was a good day. Back in the days with Fiat was sponsoring the races. And uh, six, so 625, the clock's still ticking over. So it was, it was tight. Look at that. That was tight. There's Leon Van Bon with the, the rubber bunk. So yeah, this is uh, back in the good old days. Pulte Riders there. It's Casino Riders. Oh, Map A. FDJ. Some classic stuff. Who was the, who was the first place Aussie that year? We don't. I, can't, I don't recall. I don't recall. Was Pat Yonker in that race that day? We'll have to check out the, uh, the stats. But there goes the uh, finish there. What a day, hey? What a day. Look at those houses. Let's have a bit of a rerun here. So you can see Vanderbrooker grinding that last bit just grinding the last bit classic out the saddle riding good technique like a metronome left right left right we have a look back and uh, get a mirror if you want to save energy there so just going on for it it's got his hair that was that was all the rage back in the day the, the blonde hair a grady had that frankie boy had that and uh, i think maybe even a grady started that in the, in the peloton they had these Oakleys plus the uh, the blonde dyed hair. He looked at his physiology. He's looking pretty relaxed. His physiology is looking pretty relaxed. Oh, those glasses though, I think they were Brickos. Your Brickos back in the day. Red lenses, man. <laughs> red lenses. Imagine we're doing 400 watts of red lenses. Like burn your retina. So MBK was a bike brand from France. And uh, he's even wearing a little vest under there. So yeah, it's a classic. Classic days. Kofidis is still going, man. Kofidis is still going. It's amazing the French teams that are still going. FDJ and Kofidis in the World Tour. It's amazing. There's someone in Kofidis who's a diehard cycling fan. Can you imagine? 20 years of sponsoring, 20 years of politics. You know what I mean? There's that Euro style, the Belgium style, washing the face of a little hand thing. Australia wouldn't do that, would you? That's, that's the Belgian way. Keep the, keep the grit off the face. Get the grit off your chops. And, uh, yeah, that's how, that's how we roll. They wouldn't do that in Australia, would they? Like, put the towel on your face. Aussies would be, like, freaking out. But the Belgians are a bit different. A bit more relaxed in that aspect of uh, personal touch there. So, yeah, there you go. Look, his face looks pretty fresh, doesn't he? He looks pretty fresh. Looks pretty fresh. Ja, ja, Jalibur and Festina. Wow, I mean, that's, look, the Festina bikes on the, on the Peugeot. The Peugeot bikes. And then for 2000, they switched over to specialised bikes. And that was Jaja on the giant TCR. Jaja, Lohan Jalabur was the French national champion for that year. This, this was the first year of Tour Down Under. I remember riding with Jaja back from Gaula when the stage finished. I think it was stage four, finished back from Gaula. And we rode on the back of Anse back to uh, back to the city. Actually, no, it was Tananda. It was Tananda the stage finished. We rode back on the back of Team Anse, getting held abuse by some rednecks from Davron Park. That's the deal there. So yeah, very close race.